Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. During the declared emergency in the City of Toronto, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements in a provincial order limiting attendance at public gatherings. This will be a virtual public hearing and participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, an online event that is being moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching it on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting either by their computer, a phone or tablet app, or by telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video. Any registered participants will be participating by audio only. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. To ensure audio clarity, I also suggest that you refrain from using the speakerphone functions on your telephones. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. My name is Alan Smithies and I will chair today's meeting. Joining us on the panel today are Ron Hunt, Asif Khan, Paul Kidd, and Nadini Sankar Peralta. City staff are also present, Daniel Antonacci, Adam Wills, and Jenny Kotas. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to property permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the committee's decision on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, T-Lab, or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure is as follows. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with their presentation if required by the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, is given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you are reaching the five minute limit. When addressing the committee, please state clearly your name and address. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters described in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make a presentation to the committee of the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. To ensure that a revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes, the committee may decide to defer the application if it has been substantially revised. And individuals either in support or opposed to the application are invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have finished their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of discussion on the item. The application is taken into committee for a decision. I will ask, are there, uh, are there any committee members here this afternoon who have a conflict of interest? Mr. Secretary Treasurer, I have a conflict on item number 27. That's 86 Stewart Avenue. There's a, uh, one of the letters uh, of correspondence that we received is from a firm where I have a family member who is, who is, an, who is a employed by them. Okay, that's fine. I'll have to ask one of the members remotely if they're willing to take on the chair at that point. 
Do I have any volunteers for that one? Ms. Sankar, you'll, you'll be acting chair for that point, for that item? I can't hear you. Sure, for number 27, right? For item yes. number 27, 86 Stewart Avenue. Yes, sure. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Sankar. And Mr. Secretary, Treasurer, we have no files to close. We'll now uh, go back to our agenda. We'll start off, ladies and gentlemen, we had a uh, erroneously had an application scheduled for this morning that should have been on this afternoon's agenda, so we'll start that one off first because we had to postpone it. That's item number 19, 184 Falkirk Street, and I have one person registered to speak on that item. That is Mr. Amir Shakpur. Are you there, sir? Shakpur, are you there? I'll hold this one down. We'll go, we'll proceed to item number 20. Item number 23, Pauline Avenue. I have one person registered to speak on this application. Uh, Mr. Lacasano, are you there, sir? Hello. Hello. Mr. Lacasano, are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, just going to say, uh, I wanted to ask if you're aware of a report from the Toronto Transit Commission dated the 5th of October. Yes, I am. You're aware that there, you'll have to touch base with the TTC on that particular issue? That is correct for the, uh, for the underpinning. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's the only staff comments we have on this application. We have no one else registered to speak on the item. You have three variances before us. It's very clear what you're asking for. I'll just ask the committee if it has uh, uh, any questions or comments or would it like a presentation? Mr. Chair, can I just add something to the, uh, to the minutes? Because we have an agreement with uh, one of the neighbors. Okay, that's fine. Okay. And can you just describe the nature of that agreement? Sure. Um, Mr. Chairman, we have an agreement with, sorry. Mr. Chairman, go ahead. Just so the agent knows, our minutes are not verbatim, so we will not include your agreement in our minutes. No, no, it's just I want to make, because if he is listening, I need it to be heard that this agreement was uh, was made. And again, it's a very simple, it's, a, it's about a very simple issue. Okay, but it won't be part of the minutes. But we can make it as a condition. It all depends on what your condition is. Go ahead. Yeah, it's a, it's regarding it's regarding an opaque screen on the second floor deck. That it is to be uh, a minimum of seventy two inches high. I know committee usually puts this as a a condition of a minimum of one point five meters. Um, in this case, we're proposing a one point eight meter uh, opaque screen. Okay, sir, just to emphasize, we don't make that a condition, but that's something that you've stated on the on the record of this meeting, so it would be available to someone if they wanted to to uh, determine that, okay? Okay, because again, I've seen it uh, added as a condition before. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's, um, but that's not, fine. That's fine, sir. It'll, it'll be on the, uh, it'll, it's on the recorded as part of this, these proceedings, but not in the form. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, just ask this committee, does it have any questions or comments of the speaker? Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Lokishano, my question is about the variance number three. Your floor space index allowable is 0 0.6. Yes. But, but you are asking for 1.29 
times the lot area. This is quite high. Please explain why. Yes, the again, the existing dwelling is already at 1.14. Uh, we did a study uh, of the area, and this is very in keeping uh, with uh, the projects on Pauline and uh, Brock and Russet. We did a study of 32 projects. Uh, the GFA or FSI uh, ranges anywhere from 0.82 up to a maximum of 1.43. On Pauline itself, uh, we found uh, two other projects, uh, one at 95 at 1.25 and the other one at 75, Pauline at 1.30. And there are several others at that 1.0 or 1.14 mark. So what we're asking for is not a very large increase uh, to the GFA since the existing building is already at 1.14. Uh, thank you, sir. May I ask the other question? The TTC, the TTC has yes. asked you to further discuss Correct. about the negative effect uh, of your development. Could you please explain what are those negative effects? The issue will be the uh, underpinning. So before we, uh, that's really the only excavation part to this uh, renovation. So before we underpin, we will need approval from TTC. Since the, the, since the proximity uh, to the uh, to the subway line, Mr. Loki, Santa, how deep is the underpinning? Uh, the underpinning is we are only underpinning 17 inches uh, below the existing uh, slab. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Khan. I don't want to get into technical issues related to building construction because that's not what's before us. So, okay. No, no, this is not before. Th that is true. It, it is not before us. Yes. Okay. Thank you. But I, I was just interested to know. I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh, can you? I missed that. What did you say, sir? No, it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any further questions of the speaker? Could I get a uh, motion on this application, please, Mr. Kidd? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I feel that the uh, requested variants are uh, appropriate to this neighborhood, and I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application um, uh, subject to um, um, uh, the request by the TTC uh, for the, the applicant to um, complete a TTC technical review. Uh, Mr. Kidd, just a moment. Let me check with the Secretary Treasurer. If they're requesting conditions, you can. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Yes, you can include that as a condition. So we have a okay. motion motion to approve uh, subject to the condition from the TTC. Someone to second, Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? I don't have Ms. Sankar up there on the screen, Mr. Wills. She had to she had to step out. Did she say yes? I can't okay. No, she had All to right. step out. Okay. She'll be back soon. Okay, so wait till she returns? Okay. All right. So we have a, we have a unanimous approval. Uh, I, let me just take that motion again. I'm sorry. All those in favor? That motion carries. Uh, sir, your application has been unanimously approved, subject to TTC conditions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, should we wait for Ms. Sankar to come back? Okay. All right. Item number twenty-one. Mr. Chair, do you want to go back to item number 19? Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll go back uh, one item on our agenda. It's the original item, item number 19, 184 Falkirk Street. Uh, Mr. Shockpur, are you there? Mr. Chair, Mr. Shockpur is unmuted. Um, he is available to speak, uh, but for whatever reason, he does not seem to be present right now. Mr. Shockpur, are you there? We'll come back to him, Mr. Wills. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go back to item number 21. 117 Burgess Avenue. I have one person registered to, street, to speak. That's a Mr. J. Smith. Mr. Smith, are you there? I am present, Mr. Chair. 
Yes, thank you, sir. Could I get your full name and address, please? Yeah, it's Jay Smith, and I'm the agent for 117 Burgess Avenue. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to ask, uh, it's very clear what you're asking for. There's a variance at the back for the rear deck projection. We have no uh, comments on this application from staff or any recommended conditions from staff. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Can I make a motion? Mr. Hunt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, I would move uh, approval of this application uh, in as much as there are no comments from the, any of the departments and it uh, is uh, in keeping with the four tests of a minor variance. Someone to second Mr. Hunt's motion. Mr. Khan seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'll go back to item number 19, 184 Falkirk Street. Uh, Mr. Shakpur, the owner, are you there, sir? No response. We'll proceed with the agenda. Item number 22, 6 Sarnia Avenue. I have one person registered to speak, and Mr. Colin Galt Mark. Uh, are you there, sir? Mr. Chair and members, it appears Colin is not present. Okay. Well, our okay. records our records also indicate that the agent themselves did not properly register. Oh. Okay. Well, we'll come back to uh, we'll come back to him later. Item number twenty three which is 12 West Holm Avenue. I have two people registered to speak. And the agent is a Toivo Vahi. I hope I, I pronounced that correctly. Are you there? That was perfect. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. That was a uh, correct pronunciation. Yes, hi. Could I get your full name and address, please? My name is Toivo Vahi. I am the agent representing 12 West Holm Avenue. My address is 17 Bridal Trail, Midhurst, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, we have one person, one other person registered to speak. If you could, uh, you have three variances before us. If you could give us a very brief presentation on uh, what you see are the merits of your proposal. Sure can. Um, what we have is an existing uh, situation where there's a dilapidated uh, existing uh, garage attached to the rear of the number 12 West Home Avenue. Um, as it stands, the existing garage is encroaching on the neighbor's property to the west uh, by uh, 0.1 meters at the northwest corner. Uh, this dilapidated garage uh, is not worth uh, saving, so we are proposing to construct a new garage with a 0.45 setback from the property line, thus giving back uh, um, the uh, property uh, to the neighbor where the, where the existing garage is sitting. Um, the Otherwise, uh, the other items uh, that are um, in the variances, um, let me see, uh, the, the, the floor space index, uh, which is uh, currently stands at 0 0.675, um, now is being uh, increased to uh, uh, 0.77. That's as a result of the garage uh, increasing in, in uh, a little bit of uh, uh, size uh, in order to uh, get some more storage space. Uh, there's no increase to the actual uh, living space uh, in this uh, uh, proposed addition. Um, in terms of item number three, the parking space must have a minimum of uh, uh, 3.2 meters. Uh, the proposed parking space within the garage has a uh, width of 3.18 meters, uh, which is only at the point uh, where the stair landing um, um, uh, enters into the uh, rear of the existing uh, dwelling. Uh, the rest of the interior of the garage is uh, 4.071 meters. Um, so it's our opinion that uh, we're just replacing what is existing, but actually uh, abiding by uh, uh, the, the bylaws. Okay, thank you, sir. I'll just ask the committee, uh, does it have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Khan? 
Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Wahey, I have a question about variance number one as well as variance number two. Variance number one, you are, the allowable is 0 0.45. Correct. And uh, no, no, you have a 0 0.45 and the maximum is 7.50, which is uh, quite a difference. Do you explain why you are so short? Uh, well, it's because it's a laneway uh, garage situation and it's a small existing lot. Um, so the actual uh, rear yard setback from the uh, rear of the main dwelling is only 4.5, uh, 4.58 <laughs> meters. Um, so there is no, it never did have a 7.5 meter setback. It's just to the, due to the nature of uh, the lot itself and being a laneway lot. The only place to uh, accommodate this garage, which has, which is an existing garage there, is at the rear. And uh, as a result, uh, uh, the existing garage has a zero uh, rear yard setback. So we are But, you are, too, in that but regard. you are too close to the neighbors. Sorry? Sir, I'm saying you're too close to the neighbor now. Uh, no, we're actually uh, the, the neighbors. The neighbor's uh, garage is adjacent. Uh, all these garages in the laneway are basically eve to eve. Um, in this case, we are actually moving away from where the existing garage is and setting it back 0.45. Otherwise, if, if we tried to do any other dimension uh, in the setback, uh, we wouldn't even have a garage. You couldn't get a car into it. Sir, could you explain variance number two? You are too high. 0 0.77 is too high. Uh, the existing, like as I explained uh, before, the existing uh, dwelling alone is 0.675. So as it stands without uh, a garage, we are exceeding the existing uh, uh, FSI as it is. Um, with the new garage, we are increasing to 0 0.77, and that's as a result, the garage is, is a slight, slight larger than the existing, which adds the uh, extra square footage to the FSI. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, any further questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go to our next individual registered to speak. I have uh, Marty Rapson registered. Are you there, sir? Members, it uh, does not appear that Marty has uh, joined the call. Okay, thank you. Let me take him off the list. Okay, there's uh, no further speakers on this item. Uh, we've already had our discussions with the uh, agent. If I could get a motion on this application, please. Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think uh, this is a rather unusual lot, and uh, I think the proposal that's been put forward is uh, appropriate for this uh, property. I'd like to put forward a motion to uh, accept the application. There are no uh, staff conditions, yeah. Mr. Kidd. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we have a motion from Mr. Kidd to approve the application. There are no staff conditions. Mr. Hunt, will you second? Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Kahn dissenting. Uh, that motion to approve carries, sir. Your application has been approved without condition. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, committee. Thank you. I'll go back to item number 22, 6 Sarnia Avenue. Is it Mr. Colin Galt marked there? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. It's Erica Mark for 6 Sarnia oh, Avenue. Sir. Thank you. Uh, can no I get comment. your full name and address, please? Yes, Erica Mark on behalf of 6 Sarnia Avenue. Okay, thank you very much. Now, let me just... Uh, you have one variance before you relating to uh, the basement walkout. I'll just ask, uh, there's no one else registered to speak on this item. If I And we have no uh, comments or recommended conditions from staff. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or if it would like a presentation. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kahn? No, no, sir, I have a question. Uh, okay, Mr. Kahn, uh, 
Can you ask your question, please? Th thank you, Mr. Chair. My concern is, uh, I uh, want to ask the madam, is underpinning, uh, which is actually, it's a semi, uh, semi house, and the concern is underpinning all around, and the neighbor, which shares the same uh, wall. Mr. Khan, we're not, we don't deal with the construction issues, it's just the minor variance. Sir, I, sir, I do understand it's a building department concern, but at the same time, it has to be raised now. D does she have the consent of the neighbor? Well, we'll uh, ask that we it's not, we'll, we'll ask the applicant, it's not particularly relevant to the variance, but we'll ask the neighbor. We'll ask the applicant. Madam, did you get that question from Mr. Khan? Yes, so we had discussed, we, we initially put this forth before the shutdown of COVID to our neighbors, and we did get in writing that um, they were all, we've been dealing with the son as it's um, an elderly couple, and they had written us that they were fine with, um, it wasn't a problem as long as we had a licensed uh, construction contractor. However, they wrote us once our um, notice went up that with all the construction that's been going on the train tracks, they're feeling there has already been a lot of disruption and they'd like us to revisit how we wanna do this. We've set up a meeting in the upcoming weeks where we're gonna discuss what options there are and we will uh, come to agreement together. But uh, we did initially have in writing, which I had mentioned to Jenny, I could submit, but she said it wouldn't be discussed at this uh, hearing. So told me not to, uh, not to post it. Okay, thank you. Uh, also, uh, uh, question again, Madam, your walkout is 0 0.16 meter, less than the required 0 0.60. So, I mean, it's short in uh, distance. It's very, very close to the neighbor. So how do you justify? It's a laneway there. So there is no is no neighbor on that side. We, we picked that side because we wanted as much distance from our neighbor as possible. So it would not be disruptive to them. So it's on the side that backs onto a laneway and it allows us to keep our parking and um, it, it. But it does not comply the it, zoning bylaw. Just a moment, uh, Madam. The basement walkout is in the rear yard, correct? Yes. Yeah, thank you. It's the rear of the site. Okay, any further questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I feel that this uh, um, uh, is of a minor nature, and I'd like to put forward a, uh, uh, a motion to accept the application. Someone to second Mr. Kidd's motion. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Kahn dissenting. That motion carries. Madam, your application has been approved without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I think we can go back to item number 19 now. Okay, we'll go back to item number 19, which is, uh, pardon me, 184 Falkirk Street. Mr. Shockpur, are you there? Uh, hello, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, we had, I'm sorry about the, uh, about the mix up with the uh, committee time. Uh, again, I, I think I asked you this uh, this morning if you had the opportunity to read the city planning report of the 14th of October, and that report indicated that planning had no no objection, provided if, that if the application is approved, that uh, the proposal be developed substantially in accordance with the building height as shown on the north, south, east, and west elevation drawings. Uh, have you had the you've had the opportunity to read that report, sir? Yes, I did. Okay, sir. Uh, in terms of three variances before us, it's very clear what you're asking for. There is no one registered to speak on this item. Mr. Chair, there is someone registered to speak, Robin Beter, and she is present. Oh, he is back. Okay. Um, that being the case, Mr. Shockwork, could you give us a very brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal? Uh, yes. Uh, then on the number uh, one, item number one. Uh, we're asking for the height for 8.49 meter, but this is only for the front part of the building. 
uh, the majority part of the building is 7.88, which that's what uh, in the staff reports indicated on the last page. Um, and actually for the majority of that, what we are asking for 0 0.33 meter core height. And only front part is 8.49. Uh, item number two, we are asking for six inches extra, uh, like a uh, mm, uh, width for the house. And actually instead of 1.2 meter setback, we're asking 1.07. And we picked the right side of the building, actually north side of the building. On that side, uh, we are adjacent with the uh, backyard of our neighbor. And uh, the number three, we are asking 35.5. Uh, this house is uh, only 25 feet uh, wide and uh, it's very difficult to uh, design the house we wanted, and uh, uh, actually many houses in that area are uh, even more than this. Uh, for example, the house on the side, south side of this house has more than 36% of the coverage. And item four and five are the old bylaws, uh, which uh, I think the staff uh, didn't have any issue with those things. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? Okay, thank you. Uh, we Our next uh, speaker is uh, Ms., uh, Robin Better. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Robin Better, are you there? Robin Better, are you there? Mr. Chair, they are present. They are unmuted. Uh, they're able to speak. So if Robin, you're you can hear, um, please do so. Uh, make sure you unmute your, or you authorize the microphone on your end. Robin Better, are you there? And one more time and then we'll cross you off the speakers list. Robin Better, are you there? Okay, there's no one there. Okay, we're going to move into a motion, Mr. Wills. Could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm taking the staff recommendation, and that is proposed be proposal be developed substantially in accordance with the south and north side elevation drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment uh, and attachment number one and two to this report. Also, forestry condition apply. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Someone to second Mr. Khan's motion. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? And motion carries. Sir, thank you very much. Your application has been approved, uh, subject to urban forestry and city planning conditions. And uh, my apologies for the uh, mix up on the uh, committee times. So we'll next pre thank you. proceed to uh, item number 24, which is 7 Gwynn Avenue. I have Two people registered to speak on this item. The first person is the agent, uh, Mr. Digian Batista. I hope I've uh, pronounced that correctly. Sir, are you there? Uh, I'm trying to be. Yes, hello, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yeah, my name is Giancarlo Digian Batista. I'm representing the owners uh, on this application as their agent. Okay, thank you very much, sir. We have uh, one other person registered to speak on this item. So if you could give us a very brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Uh, yes, I will through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I did submit a, a presentation to help us through this, but I'll be very quick. Um, basically the major, uh, the, only, the only variance is the front yard setback. Uh, this site is very, uh, very, very short in the front, very tight. Uh, we've gone through the zoning review and the variance is 0.2 meters. Sorry, the proposal is 0.2 meters. The requirement is 0.6 meters. There's no other way to configure the entrance to the basement for a separate basement apartment. 
So um, with with that, um, I we, we, the, the, we got a chance to talk to the neighbor next door. Uh, the picture that I submitted on the presentation on the presentation is on page number four, and you can see that they already have a similar entrance on their side. So this this uh, this shows that it is consistent with local uses. Uh, we actually have assigned the support from that neighbor. I was not able to get it in uh, due to the timeline. It just got signed in the last uh, 24 hours or so. I am prepared to submit it following this if required. Uh, so I'd like to conclude that I believe the uh, proposed uh, application is consistent with the forecast. I've summarized those forecasts and I can go through in more detail. Uh, at this point, uh, respect times, uh, uh, I will entertain um, and listen to the other presentation. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? Being none, we'll move to our next registered speaker. We have a Edward Kwok. Are you there, sir? Mr. Chair, it doesn't appear that Edward is uh, present in the meeting. They're not here? Okay. Okay. We have no one else registered to speak, so uh, there are no questions of the original speaker. If I could get a motion on this application, please. Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think this is an appropriate uh, uh, proposal for a rather unusual lot. Uh, I'd like to put forward a motion to uh, accept the uh, proposal. Uh, Mr. Kidd, there's an urban forestry condition. Okay, so we have a subject motion. To urban, yes, we have sub, a motion. Subject to urban. Yeah. Mr. Okay. Chair, I'd like uh, I'd like to make that motion subject to uh, urban forestry. Thanks, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second Mr. Kidd's motion. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting. That motion carries. Uh, sir, your application has been uh, approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you very much. I was aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 25, 38 Brookview, app 38 Brookview Drive. I have one person registered to speak. That is a Mr. Joe Domb. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Uh, are you there, sir? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you, sir. I wanted to ask if you've had the opportunity to read the city planning report of the 13th of October. They indicate in their report that they appear to have no objection to your application, provided that uh, if it's approved, the property is developed substantially in accordance with the site plan and east side elevation drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment and attached as attachments one and two to their report. Have you had the opportunity to see that report, sir? Uh, yes, I have. Okay, thank you. It's very clear what you're asking for in the four variances. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or, com or comments or would like a presentation. There being none, again, there is no, uh, no other persons registered to speak, so if I could get a motion on this application, please. Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would move approval of this application uh, on the planning staff uh, condition that the property be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan and east side elevation drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment. And I'd also note that uh, there are 10 letters of support. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hunt. Uh, someone to second Mr. Hunt's uh, motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved subject to city planning conditions. Thank you, sir. Item number 26, three Chieftain Crescent. Uh, I have one person, I'm, pardon me, I'm sorry. Item number 26, three Chieftain Crescent. I have one person registered to speak. Mr. Chair and members, uh, the agent, Eric uh, Hyden, is not present on the call. 
Okay, so we'll put that one off. I'll go to the next item. Item number 27, I have a conflict on this one. Uh, Mr. Secretary, Treasurer, Ms. Sankar, uh, could you take the chair, please? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Smithies. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be acting chair just for this one uh, application. So what we have before us is number 27, which is 86 Stewart Avenue. Um, this is really to construct a second story addition over the existing dwelling with some interior and exterior alterations. Um, I will depend on uh, Mr. Secretary Treasurer, Deputy Secretary Treasurer, to let me know who the applicant is on file. We have a Andrew Solari. Ms. Chair and Andrew. members, Andrew is not present in the meeting at this time. Okay, um, so well, would that mean that we should move on to number 28 and invite Mr. Smithies back? Yes, we'll do that. We'll okay, hold. then we'll invite the chair back to his role for item number 28, unless you would like me to continue, but I'm, yeah, he's there. Thank you. Okay, hold to hold it down, okay. Actually, we'll go back to, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Sankar. We'll go back to item number 26, which is uh, three chieftain crescent. Is the agent there, Mr. Hayden, are you there? Mr. Chair, they're not back yet. They're not back, okay. Item number 27, we'll go to item number 28. 261 Olive Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. Uh, Young Feng Zhang, are you there? Mr. Chair, I remember 28. 28? The agent is Lucas oh, Cocomelo. I'm, I'm sorry. Item number 20. Oh, this is labeled. In, Item number 28, 261 Olive Avenue. I have a Lucas Cocomello listed as the agent. Are you there, sir? Yes, I'm here, but oh, I'm not for that address. Can I get your full name and address? Uh, beforehand, I'm supposed to be for 86 Stewart Avenue. That's the item that we're currently on. Okay, thank you, sir. I have one, one other person registered to speak on this application, uh, but before you start your presentation, sir, well, uh, I want Sorry, to... hold on a second. I'm for 86 Stewart Avenue. He's for 86 uh, Stewart Avenue. I think Avenue. he's talking about item number 27, sir, for which I I, I can resume that role if he's here now. Oh, he's... Okay. Uh, yeah, he's here for 27, not for what okay. we're currently right. looking at. Now. I have to excuse myself. <laughs> okay. Ms. Sankar... You, you have the chair. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, uh, sir, can you state your name again? Because we, I think we had had an Andrew Solari. Is that what you've said? Yeah. Can you state, um, state uh, your full name and address, please, for the record. Yeah. My name is uh, Lucas Cocomello, uh, 2157 Royal Windsor Drive in Saga. Okay, um, before we get started, can I ask uh, our planning team uh, there if there are anyone uh, registered to speak on this item? Ms. Chair and members, there are, and there is one person looking to speak against for this item. Okay, I will uh, request their names after. Um, so uh, right now, uh, Mr. Cocomello, um, are you aware that there are a number of um, reports that uh, need to be addressed for this item. The first being a staff report of uh, October 15th, of which uh, the staff has indicated that they would like to see variance number one, the lot coverage modified. They've given sort of a number of 32%, as well as um, should the committee choose to approve this application, the staff recommends that item uh, variance number six be refused. Are you aware of this staff report? Have you had a chance to look at it? Yes, we've uh, we've reviewed the staff report. We've actually uh, revised the drawings quite a bit to remove more than just uh, the coverage variance and the uh, the eaves variance. 
Okay. We've also looked at Stigard variants. Uh, we initially okay. asked so for. Uh, what I will variants. do. Uh, Mr. Cocomello, I will um, I will get through first of all the changes that you've made here today. But before doing so, I also wanted to ensure that you realize there was also a transportation report uh, of October six thirteenth. Uh, so I am thinking they're recommending deferral. Maybe some of your changes might have accommodated transports report. Forestry applies, and there's also the. Uh, objections from the West Lansing Homeowners Association. Yeah, we're, I'm aware of all the reports that have been posted. Okay, so let's start first with the changes you wish to make here today on the floor with the variances. Please let us know which so, variances. So we're removing uh, variance number one, the coverage. Okay, variance number variance one is being removed. Yeah, variance number four uh, regarding uh, parking space. Uh, we're going to comply with what transportation is noted uh, with minimum parking space being 5.6 meters wide by 2.6 meters in width. So we're going to push our garage back to make it work. Uh, so we're removing variance number four. So removing variance number four as well. Yes. yes. And we're removing the eaves variance that we proposed, variance number six. That one's being removed as well. Okay. So, so far I've got that you have removed variance one, uh, number four, and number six, which seems yes, to yes. satisfy a number of the recommendations and reports uh, that we received. Um, yes. Because we have um, folks wishing to speak on this matter, perhaps you can give us a five minute presentation and I'll ask our uh, planning team to time you as well. So you may begin. Yeah, so the owners of Music Stewart retain shill engineering to provide their own set of drawings to uh, do a second story addition and a. Um, yeah, this is wrong. Sorry? This is wrong. Okay, I'm sorry, so there's, there's some feedback that we're hearing, I think, from the planning team. I'm not sure, but um, please continue. Yeah, yeah. so we were, we were retained to do a second story uh, addition and a two story side yard addition. Uh, on this property on 86 uh, Stewart Avenue. Uh, in talks with uh, the planning department, we received uh, some pushback on some of the variances that we were initially requested. And afterwards, uh, the homeowner and I discussed on what we can do to uh, mitigate the variances uh, being asked and how we could potentially remove them. Uh, we decided that we were, as already previously noted, we were moving the coverage variance, parking space variance, uh, and the ease variance, which in turn uh, complies with what planning was requesting, um, complies with what transportation was requesting. Uh, and in doing all that, we made the assumption that we what we're proposing now is minor in nature uh, for this uh, post development. Okay, thank you. Um, now you've mentioned that parking um, transportation, you've you've appeased some of their requests, but they're also looking at um, variance uh, number five. Um, and I don't see that anything was done Two variants, uh, number five. I see you've removed one, four, and six. Yes, transportation noted that they're fine with uh, moving the parking space uh, fronting Stewart Avenue. Okay. All right. So then uh, maybe we can take some time to listen to the speakers. Um, and I will depend on planning team to let me know who's first up to speak on this matter. Ms. Chair and committee, um, the first and only speaker is Paul Peter Popolis. They'll uh, be ready to speak uh, momentarily. Okay. Mr. Peter Popolis, are you there? Yes. Yes, great. If I can have your name and address for the record, please. Yes, it's Paul Petropolis, okay. and I live at 88 Stewart Avenue. Okay, if you you have five minutes to begin and given the changes that were made by the applicant here today, I wondered if that sufficed um, for your concerns. 
Please go ahead. Uh, we have uh, several items still, I guess, outstanding. Uh, one is there's height variances on uh, variants two and three that we are concerned about uh, losing natural light in and, off and on our property. So we're questioning the need for the additional height. Also uh, on variance four, we challenged that, but I guess that's now been eliminated, so that's fine. But we still do challenge to variance five. Uh, we're concerned about the safety of uh, where the new driveway would be because it's very close to the intersection and the crosswalk, there's a crosswalk there. Uh, plus, there'd be an obstruction of our driveway views when backing out from our driveway. Uh, plus, if it's a slope driveway, we're concerned about drainage. So I'm not sure if it's going to be sloped. It appears it might be, uh, but we're concerned about drainage uh, if, if they go ahead with variance five. And then we were also concerned about variance six, but that's now been changed and and refused so that's fine okay is there anything else no i think uh, variance five is probably our major concern the uh the driveway uh, repositioning uh from where it was on radin avenue okay okay um and now we'll ask our members if you have any questions of the speaker go ahead mr khan thank you ma'am uh Mr. Petropoulos, my question is, are you aware, sir, that the transport services has already asked for deferral of this particular item? Do you know that? Uh, no, I wasn't aware. But if the if the applicant agrees, would you like that? I'd like to see a little bit more uh, evidence. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Hunt, you had your hand up. Was there anything further? We can't hear you, Mr. Hunt. Hunt. There uh, you go. Uh, also speaking to variance five, uh, the applicant mentioned that transportation services had no concerns with the driveway, but they go on to say on that, that however, the required parking space within the driveway is substandard and must be revised. And I believe they, their comments on the two variances four and five led to their conclusion that they recommended deferral uh, so that they could uh, have additional discussions uh, regarding that element. So I just wanted to, to see if the applicant uh, could just let me know their feelings about the substandard driveway. Okay, so if there's no more questions for the speaker, I'll invite the applicant back um, to uh, address the concerns of the members of this committee, as well as the, uh, the first speaker who talked about height variance, losing natural light and number variance number five and particular drainage issues as well around that. If you can, uh, if you can explain in five minutes, you've got. Yeah. So the all heights that we're requesting, uh, we're only asked so for the neighbor on 88 Stewart Avenue. Uh, we're asking on the we're only asking for a portion for the bedroom to get a window where we need the extra heights in in the max wall for the, for the max wall height. Um, we aren't asking for like actual building height or anything like that we just need wall height so at least we can get the proper window into that into the bedroom by code um the other wall height that they're referencing the east side that's uh abutting routine avenue or uh, routine road um that one we are allowed to go up to 60 percent exceeding up to 40 or 60 percent exceeding the max wall height so Oh, sorry. Oh, it's the front wall. The front wall height, we're asking for extra, uh, extra in width. 
just because that wall, that main wall is fronting uh, Stewart Avenue and a lot of other uh, committee applications in the past have to ask for similar variances. Uh, so we're only at what we're trying to do is just ask for what we need opposed from overdoing it necessarily. Right? Now, with regards to the parking space uh, that transportation has uh, made a note of, what we did was we actually pushed the garage door inwards towards inside the house to create the minimum 5.6 meter uh, parking space depth as required. So by doing that, we actually created the parking space that transportation uh, made a link that they want us to actually uh, put together. Um, now, with regards to the neighbor and them being able to back outside, back out of their driveway, and if it creates visibility issues, from the property line to the curb cut, there is five meters. So there's still, in, in total, there's about 10 meters. Uh, of driveway, five of which is the public right of way, where they can still move their car, they can still back their car out and enter Stewart Avenue safely. Okay, are there any more questions from committee members for uh, Mr. Cocomello? No? Uh, yes, Mr. Hunt. Yeah. Uh Thank you, Madam Chairman. I I just want to be clear now. You're, from what you just uh, described, the concern in variance five, the, the second half of that uh, concern, has been uh, alleviated now by a change in your plan that has been conveyed to uh, transportation. Or or is that still the the request that it must be revised? No, we, we will comply with the parking minimum parking space of 5.6 meters by 2.6 meters. Okay, so. But the access point that you're noting, the, the access point, uh, what they mainly wanted was to make sure we're on the outer radius, outer radius of the actual turn on where Stewart Avenue is. And right. that's where we placed the new curb cut. We wouldn't, we, there's, we wouldn't be allowed to go and do it on the, uh, the outer radius any closer than where we proposed. If we had a wider lot, that's a different story. But right now we have a 8.23 meter frontage where we're actually limited to how far we can pull this uh, uh, curve cut and where we can actually place uh, the driveway entrance. Does that answer your question, Mr. Hunt? Um, well, I guess uh, my, maybe I'll change my question and say, is variance five, the way you've requested it now, satisfactory to the transportation department? Yes. Okay, thank you. If there are no other questions, committee members, can I have a motion? Mr. Hunt. Thank you. Uh, based on the discussion today and the indication from the uh, applicant that uh, there are deletions in the original variances and that uh, one of the variances has been uh, changed or revised to the acceptance of the transportation department, I would move approval of this uh, with the following changes. Uh, deletion of variance one, deletion of variance four, and deletion of variance six, and the modification uh, described by the applicant for variance five as well as the standard conditions of urban forestry 
and acknowledging the letter from the councillor uh, that the, uh, the, the the overall coverage will be reduced to 32 percent. That's my motion. Okay, so we have a motion from Mr. Hunt that the application be re approved with the deletion of variants one, four, and five, and subject two, four, three. Um, one, I, four, I, one, sorry, four, one, four, and six. One, four, and six. Sorry, and with um, uh, subject to forestry. Can I have a second to this motion? Without a second, that motion fails. Are you seconding, Mr. Khan? Yes, we have a second from Mr. Khan. All in favor? All opposed? Mr. Kidd dissenting. Uh, Mr. Cocomello, your application has been approved with the changes uh, that I that we've stated several times <laughs> um, in this hearing. Do I need to repeat it, uh, planning team? Or have you got that? We got the motion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, now I'd like to invite Mr. Smithies, our chair, back to address, I believe it's item number 26. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Item number 26, again, thank you, Ms. Sankar. Item number 26, three Chieftain Crescent. Mr. Wills, can I just confirm that I have, uh, for three for uh, three Chieftain Crescent, I have 15, Eric Hayden as the speaker? No, for, fifth, for three Chieftain Crescent, it's gonna be actually Chris Marchese, and he is on the line. Okay, hang on. My... Uh, my list, Mr. Wills, isn't. Uh, I have item. I have item number twenty-six, as fifteen Hesketh Court. And my list has item number twenty-six as fifteen Hesketh Court as well. Okay, so Eric Hayden is not the speaker then. Eric Hayden is the speaker for item number twenty-six. You asked about Chieftain Court, though. Hey, just a moment. Okay, yeah, I have item number 26 is three Chieftain Crescent. So Eric Hayden is the spokesperson for... He's not here. Correct. Mr. Chair and members, three Chieftain Crescent is going to be actually represented by Eric Marchands, and he's on the phone now. Okay, item number 26, three Chieftain Crescent. Sir, are you there? Hello, hi, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Can I get your phone? I, 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 I just want to, I, sir, can I just I get want your to phone? clarify something. Sir, can I get your full name and address, please? Yeah, my name is Chris Marchese, 185 Legion Road North. And I know there's been a confusion going on in who is the authorized agent to speak. Um, Andrew Solari, who the applicant for the file, um, sent a message to COA um, on October 5th, verifying that I would be the speaker for this file. Um, they were confirmed saying that that is okay. Um, I'm not sure where the mix up has come from, but I've been the authorized agent. And we confirmed that on October 5th with city staff. Okay, but it's a, yeah, you, you, are, you are the agent uh, for the applicant. Correct, I am the agent. Correct. I am the agent for three chief team present. Okay, thank you. I wanted to uh, just wanted to say, sir, I have no other speakers registered for this uh, registered for this item. Pardon me. This one here, there is. This, is. this file is dead. Okay. He's okay. All right. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. My my apology. We had a little mix up on our schedule here. I have one yeah, person no worries, no to worries, speak sir. on this item. 
So if you could give us a, a very brief presentation on what you see as the merits of this proposal. No problem, I can do that. So um, good afternoon, Sir Chair and fellow committee members. My name is Chris Marchese and I'm a planner retained by the property owners of 3 Chief St. Crescent to present this committee of adjustment application in front of you today. The application is to legalize and maintain the existing rear accessory structure of the subject property and there's one variance associated um, with the application that's in front of you. Before getting into the single variance, I just want to note that there's been no comments from city staff regarding the application that's in front of you today. Um, the variance is to impede the rear yard setback for an accessory structure to 1.2 meters or 1.92 meters as proposed. Um, in regards to the variance, it's encroaching 0 .27, 0 0.72 of a meters, um, but the impact will not be any greater than what is already contemplated by the bylaw. Um, the reason for this is that there's still an adequate amount of space um, between the main conjunction point of the um, rear property as well as where the cabana is located. Furthermore, we're 40 centimeters lower than what the permitted height is on this structure. So although we're closer, um, we've actually brought it down in height to minimize the visual impacts. Further to this, across the mutual property line at the rear there of both properties, there is a canopy of mature tree that's been existing for an extended period of time. I know the individual has issued a letter of objection with a picture that's attached to that. Um, that picture looks to, as though it's actually being taken from under the trees. You can see the needles on the floor, but the, the property actually depicts um, a privacy screening through the canopy that exists on the area. Um, there's no other variances associated with the height, the oversize of the canopy, um, showing that the pool where the pool is located, it just helps with the functionality of the amenity space in the rear. Um, if we move it any closer away from the property line, it's gonna be located right in the center of the stairs. Um, even though it's, it's minor in nature with the number and the variances requested, I feel that it meets the four tests under section 45.1 of the Planning Act, and I'll be happy to answer any questions from this point on. Thank you very much, sir. I'll just ask the committee, does it have any questions or comments? Mr. Khan? Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I would like to know what this structure is used for. Um, it's just a, a little congregation area um, coming out of the pool. There's no walls located on it. Um, there's no living space. It's actually an open structure. The only wall there is for a little fireplace will be running. Um, these lots, you can probably consider them to be estate lots in the city of Toronto. Um, a lot of tear down and rebuilds to develop multi-million dollar homes. Um, my client has, has just recently put lots of money into the rear landscaping of the property. Um, there's, there's no living space in there. Um, that's not the plan. It's just an area that's gonna be used during the summer to be in conjunction with the pool to maximize the amenity space in the rear of the property. But sir, you, you should know that the neighbor has already raised the question or has brought to our notice is it is his aesthetic is concerned. And what do you say about that? I mean, your structure is too high. So so if you look, there, there, there's a, 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 a block of trees, a line of trees that are well over um, where the canopy is going to be located. From where his pool is and where he's going to be located in his backyard, um, there's no visual impact to that cabana. Like I said originally, that picture is actually taken from underneath the trees. Um, the visual impact is mitigated. We've lowered the height lower than what's permitted to make sure that it helps even more. We've um, installed a new fence at a, at a higher level to mitigate the impacts of that. Um, there's no other functionality spot on, this, on, the, on the rear yard that works. And uh, I'm still of the, of the opinion that with the location of this, even though it's 0.7 meters um, encroaching into the permitted rear yard setback, that the privacy screens are still being honored, um, that the room for, for water runoff and, and distance between the two properties are there. And um, it won't be a cause for concern in terms of uh, privacy mitigation or privacy effects. Okay, thank you very you much. Setback, I have one, one, one more question, sir. Sir, setback required is 1.92. And you are yep. providing only 1.2. Why short? Yep. Um, the the minor in nature test is not a number substance. Um, it, it's more based on the impact that's already considered by the bylaw. And with the bylaw considering the 1.92, the fact that we've lowered the height, the impact of this will not have any greater effect as if we were located setbacks from the required distance. It would cause an adverse effect on our property by locating the cabana right in front of the stairs of the pool. But 
the, the minor in nature test is not a number of substance. It's not supposed to be based on percentage. It's supposed to be based on increased impact that the bylaw already contemplates. And in my professional opinion, the location of this cabana does not encroach um, any of those concerns or cause any more negative impacts than what the bylaw is already contemplating. There's 1.2, what is it, it is half off. It's, it's, I, I respect the comment um, through you, sir, Chair, but uh, the, the test is not a numbers test. It's not a percentage test. It's supposed to be minor in nature in terms of the impact that it's causing. And uh, in my professional opinion, this, this, this location of the cabana is causing no adverse impact as if it were located 1.92 meters away from the property line. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Uh, we have one other person registered to speak on this. It's Bernard Schneider. Are you there, sir? Yes, I'm here. Yes, sir. Could I you get your me? full name and address, please? Yes, my name is uh, Bernard Schneider, and I live at 31 Fiveshire Road. I back onto the, uh, my backyard backs onto that structure, and I'm objecting to the, well, to the, to the structure as it exists today. It's, um, I sent a picture uh, just to give you an idea of what, how close it is and how tall it is to my backyard. Um, there's a, um, a tree in front of it, which uh, is now losing its leaves. And by the end of October till whenever May or June, whenever the leaves come back, this structure, which is very massive, it's got a cement wall along the back part of it. I don't know if it's a fire pit or whatever he put in there. There's, I have no idea, no, I was never consulted about it. Um, it's not a gazebo, which has been described in the application and in the survey. It's a, it's a much bigger uh, structure than that. It's massive. Uh, it should be much further back so it won't impact my view uh, for six months of the year. And um, and it's much more than a minor variance. Uh, if you just do the numbers, it's 36 percent. There's a reason for the numbers being set out in the bylaw, and it's got to be maintained. And lastly, uh, they built this uh, structure. They never got a building permit, so that's incorrect. Uh, I understand the city has started uh, some legal proceedings because they did this without a permit, and now they. Now they inf they violate the setback requirement. So where do two wrongs don't make a right, in my opinion? So that that's my objection. It, it's objectionable because it's just not it's not aesthetic. If they should be back. It shouldn't be as high, and I won't have to see this this towering building, uh, you know, for six months of the year. It just shouldn't be there. That in in that, um, you know, the way it's structured now. It's not a gazebo. I mean, I know what a gazebo looks like. Uh, it's open. It's it's uh, it's circular. It's uh, you know, there's there's no mass mass to it. This is a completely different type of building. So that's why I'm objecting. Okay, sir. Uh, I, okay, yeah. sir, sir, I wanted to ask. You understand that there's no height variance involved with this particular application. The only variance that, it, that is involved is the rear yard setback. There's no height variance required. Uh, the, the, the height of the structure is complies with the zoning bylaw. Well, I mean, it's a story and a half tall. Sir, at I'd least. Say that I don't you, know if anybody's been I just been wanted there to make it clear. It. You understand that the only variance he's applying for is for the rear yard setback, a difference of 0.7 meters. Uh, so there is no height variance. He's the, the height of the structure is not an issue here. It complies with the bylaw. Well, oh, you know, I can't argue if that's the way it is. It, what it is, it's too close to my backyard, and it should be further back. Okay. And it should you, comply with the That's, that's the fine. I just want to make it clear that he doesn't need a variance for height. Okay. Are there any questions well, of the speaker? that's the case. Any questions of the speaker? Sorry? Mr. Kahn? Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Schneider, uh, hello. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, sir. Sir, you can raise this question that committee had only to deal with the setback, nothing with the height. When the, when he's already with the building department with no permit, you can raise this question with the building department about the height. 
Okay, well, um, I don't know what options I have to do that. Uh, I understand that uh, that if this material that if this uh, variance goes through, then the uh, the building the, the uh, building requirements the requirement for a building uh, permit will be uh, solved resolved and the uh, and the existing location will be as is. So uh, you know this minor variant seems to I'm told is going to resolve everything. So is it probably too late? To deal with the height, at least in, uh, for what I understand. Okay, thank you. Any further questions of the speaker? We'll go back to uh, the uh, agent, sir. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. You've, you've heard the uh, comments from Mr. Schneider. If you want to respond to them, yeah, no problem. Um, through you, sir, chair, and, and fellow committee members, um, the no building permit issue um, is, is 100% full disclosure. Um, because of there's no walls, my client was actually under the impression that it wasn't going to be considered a, a, an accessory structure. Um, he was incorrect on that. He was given a file of contravention, and since then we started the minor variance application immediate following that. Um, we're not trying to get around um, not submitting for permits or doing things illegally. Um, and I've made him aware from the second that I was retained on this file. Um, he's saying again that it's not minor because percentage, and I think I, I gave an, uh, an explanation to that in my original justification. I said it's not a numbers game, it's based on impact when they're talking about minor. And I feel that the size, the setback to the rear is no much further impacting or in a negative way, um, either the subject property or the property abutting to the rear. Um, he wants it much further back. The farthest much further back would be is 0.7 meters, and the impact's going to be the exact same. Um, if we move it 0.7 meters back, but we actually put it to the height that's permitted by the bylaw, um, then it's going to have the exact same impact. It's going to be 50 centimeters higher, 0.5 meters higher, and 0.7 meters moved back. So the, the impact, and that's what I'm really trying to explain to the committee members, is going to be almost identical as to um, what is compliant for the zoning for an accessory structure, but it just allows us to build that that um, accessory structure away from the stairs of the pool to allow in and out access of the pool that already exists today. Um, in terms of trees leaving and, and not seeing it, there's large trees, large trunks there. Um, their congregation area and their setback from where their pool is, which would be considered the main congregation area of their backyard, is set back approximately 10 meters from where that structure is located. Um, even if we're set back 0.7 meters in from where we're being proposed, he's still going to see that structure the exact same from the main congregation area of his backyard. Um, in terms of being too tall, um, their chair um, Smitty's went over that and explained that there is no height variance, so I'd just like to reiterate that. And I think that I provided justification as to why we're proposing it to be that 0.7 meters into the rear lot line. Any other questions, I'd be happy to answer, and thank you. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Hunt? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, having listened to both the, uh, the applicant and the concerns of the neighbors, um, I believe that uh, given that there were no departmental concerns expressed, uh, either from urban forestry or planning, uh, I would move approval of the application. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Someone to second Mr. Hunt's motion? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? We have a tie vote, uh, Mr. Secretary Treasurer. Do, can I make a? a yeah, I will. I will support Mr. Hunt's motion. I've been out to. Uh, I've had the opportunity to look at the neighborhood. I certainly think what the uh, applicant is proposing here is uh, appropriate. Certainly complies with the Planning Act. It has no significant negative impacts on the surrounding neighbors. So I'm going to support Mr. Hunt's motion. So that motion carries, with uh, Mr. Khan and Ms. Sankar dissenting. Sir, your application has been approved. Thank you so much, sir, Chair and fellow committee members. Have a great day. Item number 28, 261 Olive, Olive Avenue.
I have one person registered to speak, a Yang Feng Zhang. Are you there? Mr. Yang Feng Zhang, are you there? Sir, it's, uh, sir, you have to turn off all your uh, all all other electronic devices. Just use your phone and and turn off the speakerphone. Turn off your television sets, your radios, whatever whatever else you have on. Just use your telephone. Sir, are you there? Sir, we can't hear you. Have some other electronic device on. Sir, are you there? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, Mr. hello, Chairman, sir. My name is Bill. Sir, can I get your full name and address, please? Uh, Mr. Chairman, my name is Bill Roth. Sir, we can't hear you. You have to speak up. Bill, can you please speak up? Mr. Chair and members, I can look to put Bill Ross on his own line as he has called in but was not registered. I'll go ahead and do that now. Oh, so that's another speaker on this item, Mr. Wills? Correct. Bill Ross is apparently going to be a representative for this file. Oh. Bill, go ahead on your uh, on the line you've called in on with your own name. Mr. Ross, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Ross, are you the agent for 261 Olive Avenue? Yes. Okay, thank you. I have uh, just wanted to ask, can I get your full name and address, please? It's Bill Ross, number nine, Beswick Lane, that's B E S W I C K Lane, Uxbridge, Ontario, L 9 P 1 G 4. Okay, thank you, sir. I wanted to ask, have you had the opportunity to see, to read the uh, city planning report of the 14th of October? They indicate yes, that, I have. They indicate that they have appear to have no. Sir, do you, sir, do you have other electronic devices on? Can you turn them off, please. Uh, the planning department indicates they have no objection provided that the proposal is developed substantially in accordance with the east elevation and west elevation drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment attached as attachments one and two. Have you seen that report? Yes, I have. Okay, can you, uh, we have no one, we, uh, we have no one else registered to speak on this, Mr. Wills? Okay, thank you. It's very clear what you're asking for in the five variances we have before us. I'll just ask the committee, does it have any questions of the speaker? There being none, uh, again, they're the only comments we have are from city planning. If I could get a motion on this application, please. Ms. Sankar. Uh, Mr. Chair, through you, I, I do agree that this uh, application does seem uh, minor and is, um, you know, appropriate for the development of that area. I do believe it meets the four tests. So I'll put forward a recommendation um, to approve this application. Um, and it will be subject to the October 14th uh, staff report in that the proposal be developed substantially in accordance with the east elevation and west elevation drawings submitted to the committee. And that would be my motion. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Can I get a uh, some of the second Ms. Sanchez's motion? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved, uh, subject to city planning conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item uh, 29201 Johnston Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That's the agent, Mr. Ali Shakiri. Are you there, sir? Yes, sir. Ali Shakiri, 326 Shepherd Avenue East. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I just wanted to, uh, it's very clear what you have, uh, the four variances we have before us. I note that we have uh, no comments or recommended conditions from staff. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or would like a presentation. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan?
Mr. Khan, we can't hear you. Mr. Khan, we can't hear you. Uh, okay, okay, sir. Uh, can you hear me now? Yep. Thank you. Variants are minor and meet the zoning bylaw 569-2013 and is intent is met. Therefore, I move it should be approved. Can someone to second Mr. Khan's motion? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 30, 264, Joycey, Joycey Boulevard. I have, just let me, uh, I have one person registered to speak here. Mr. Wills, can you confirm that the person registered to speak is an Andrew P Pienio? I can confirm the present. Here they are. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Pianio, are you there? I hope I've pronounced that correctly. All right, okay, Mr. Chairman and the committee members. My name is Andrew Pianio. Andrew Pianio. Yes, can I get your full can name? You and Sir, can I get your full name and address, please? Okay, my name is uh, Andre Pianio, 264 Joycey Boulevard. North York, M5M, 2V7. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to uh, let you know we have, there are no uh, staff comments or recommended conditions from staff on your application. Uh, there is no one registered to speak on the application. We have seven variances before us. It's pretty clear what you're asking for in the variances. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or what would like a presentation. Mr. Kahn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Pianio, my question is variance number one. Your 37.73 is a little high than the allowable 30%. How do you justify? Okay, uh, can I uh, uh, authorize? I would like to authorize my agent to speak. Can I? Sure. Yes. What's that, sir? Can you repeat that? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm, yes, I'm my authorized agent is uh, Gervaze Talushkevich. Yeah, I'm here with the owner, and he actually asked me to to uh, to uh, talk on on uh, his behalf. If it's fine, could we have your name, please? Uh, my name is Jerry Talushkevich. G E R R Y. Uh, last name is P A L U S Z K I E W I C Z. And you are the agent, sir? Yes. Uh -oh. Okay, so if you could answer Mr. Khan's question, please, regarding variance number one. Yes, uh, we have a comment before from the planning department, and they asked us, uh, we had before a uh, larger uh, coverage, uh, they asked us to reduce it, so we reduced it as much as we could. So it was about half what we asked for, and uh, we believe uh, that this is the max we can go for. Uh, and this is uh, actually when we check the the neighborhood. Uh, this is what uh, what uh, what kind of uh, coverage? Uh, quite a lot of uh, houses or developments are getting uh, from the committee. Uh, but sir, this is more than the allowable. You way high. You are only allowed thirty percent. You are asking for thirty-seven point seven three percent, which is quite high. Yes, I understand, to, but uh, but you have to modify. Uh, we already modified this. Uh, there was a comment from the city planner, and they asked us to go below forty percent. So we, that's what we did. We actually have uh, thirty-seven point seventy-three percent right now. So you're in. You don't want to go further. So your justification, sir, is that. To sum, if I can summarize, is that you met with city planning, they told you to reduce it to this amount? Is that correct? Uh, not really to this amount, but below 40%, as I recall. So because we have 42 point something, and we reduce it to 37%, 37.7. Okay, thank you. Any further questions of the speaker? 
Could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I'm, I'm satisfied that uh, uh, the applicant has been working with the city and uh, the fact that there's been no uh, staff report on this uh, 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 reassures me that uh, this is an appropriate uh, development for the area. I'd like to put in a motion to um, uh, accept the application. Uh, someone to second Mr. Kidd's motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanim unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Item Thank you. number 31, 243 Hillhurst Boulevard. I have one person registered to speak, and Mr. Zabzumi. Are you there, sir? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. My name is Marin Zabzuni. I'm the agent for 243 Chelhurst Boulevard. Great. Thank you, sir. Could I get your, uh, you gave us your full name and address. Uh, I just wanted to ask, sir, we have no one else registered to speak on this item. Uh, we also have no comments or recommended conditions from staff. You have two variances that you're requesting. I think the committee is pretty clear on what you're asking. I'll just ask them if they have any questions or comments or would like a presentation. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Through you, Mr. Chair, I'll motion to approve this application as is. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item number 32. 36 Little Boulevard. I have uh, one person registered to speak here. That's uh, Eddie Perez. So are you there? I'm here. Good afternoon, Chairman and committee members. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. You can hear us, sir. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. I just wanted to ask oh, uh, if you've had the opportunity to read the report from city planning dated the 13th of October. They're recommending, yeah, we have. they're recommending modifying variance number three for the proposed rear yard landscaping from 26.4% to 32.43%, uh, eliminating variance number four for the proposed total floor area of all ancillary buildings and eliminating variance number five for the proposed total area on the lot covered by ancillary buildings and using permeable materials when constructing the proposed driveway. Now, have you had, you've, I hope you've had the opportunity to read that report. We, we did read it and we already had our revised drawings like three weeks ago, but they, they didn't download, they didn't upload them on time, I guess. But there's revised drawings in the file. We already showed the removing of the two variances and we also provided the landscaping of 32.43. So can the I drawings have been revised? So can I just ask, sir? Uh, do you have to make um, do you have to make changes to your application, or these these are the, uh, the the application we have before us reflects what was recommended by planning? No, the, they've already been they were already revised and sent to the committee a few weeks ago. Mr. Chair and but members, they didn't, they didn't upload them on time. Mr. Chair, members, and Eddie, um, at this time, the public notice that went out does not reflect the changes that the applicant and city planning agreed upon. So, uh, Mr. Prez, if you could go through the public notice and change uh, the items that you want to change that reflect the agreement you made with city planning using the public notice that was sent uh -huh. out. Well, we're fine with the, the new uh, uh, recommended from the planning department. Now, hang, hang on, sir. Can Mr. You, Perez, uh, you need to uh, tell us what the changes are. So go through each one and tell us what the changes are. Okay, the changes that we did was uh, we re we now have 32.43%. Okay, hang on just a second, uh, Mr. Perez. Mr. Perez, can you please read the, the variance number and tell us which one is being changed? Don't just tell us. Okay. Uh, variance one, we didn't change. Variance two. Uh, Hang on, sir, sir. Just wait. 
Item number one, is it staying the same? Correct. Is it staying the same? Well, there, mi there might have been an error on that one as well, because it says 0.7. I, that should be 0 0.60. Hang on just a second. The closest. Variance number one, are you changing it? Variance we can change that one to point, point 0.60. We can change that too. You're changing it from 0 0.17 to 0 0.60. Okay, so it's going from 0 0.17 meters to yeah, 0 0.60 0 meters. Point, correct. That's on variance okay. number one. What about variance correct. number two? Variance two, we're not making any changes. You're keeping it at 53.6. We are, sir. Okay. Variance number three, the proposed rear yard landscaping is 26.4%. Does that stay the same? No, we're changing that one to 32.43 as per uh, request from uh, planning. planning. Okay, so it's going from 26.4% to 32.43. Correct. Correct. Variance number four, the proposed total floor area of all ancillary buildings is 46.82 square meters. Is that staying the same? No, it's getting removed completely. Variance number four is deleted. Variance number five, the proposed ancillary buildings and structures cover 14.9% of the lot area. Is that changing? That's getting com uh, removed completely. Variance number five is being deleted. Okay. Variance number six, the proposed building length is 17.37 meters. Is that staying the same? Remaining the same. Okay, variance number seven, the proposed floor space index is 0 0.92 times the area of the lot. Stays the same? Remaining the same. Thank you. Variance number eight, the proposed front yard setback is 5.5 meters. Does that stay the same? Remaining the same. Thank you, sir. Variance number nine, the proposed north side yard setback is 0 0.6 meters. Is that changing? Remaining the same. Thank you, sir. Terrific. Thank you. I'll just let me just see here. We have no one else registered to speak on this item. You've made the changes that uh, looks like the planning requested. I'll just ask the committee. Does it have any questions or comments or would like a presentation? No. Could I get a motion on this revised application? I have a question. Oh, Mr. Khan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have two questions. Sir, my question number one is regarding variance number two. Your soft landscape, front uh, soft landscape is 53.6. While the bylaw requires 75%, you are way down. How do you justify that I should accept this? Well, uh, in this case, we have a side driveway and it also has the right of way, which limit us, us to uh, give more landscaping because of that. And uh, as per uh, planning, uh, we're gonna put permanent pavers. So that'll uh, uh, help the, ease the factor of the 75%. So I just, I feel that it meets the, the test because we have a right of way there where we cannot make it green. So because of that right of way, it limited us to add any more green. Okay, sir, I'm moving to variance number seven now. My next question is variance number seven. Your floor space index is 0 0.92 the, times the lot. And the requirement maximum that is allowable is 0 0.8 times the lot. How do you justify this increase? Well, uh, 0.92 is uh, very common in the area. It's, uh, it's typical. It's not a, a variance that is out of character in the area. They're, they get up to over 0.1 in certain uh, locations. So I feel that this variance is, for the area is it justified and it uh, meets the fourth test. But the bylaw allows you only 0 0.8. That's the maximum you are allowed, but 0 0.0.92 is too high. I, under, I understand it, but in, it is, it's not too high because in this area, there have been approved 
for higher than 0.92. There is many uh, houses in the area that are approved for more than 0.92. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this revised application, please? Ms. Sankar? Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I, um, I accept the explanations provided here by the applicant today. And so I'll put forward a motion to approve this application. I'll make it subject to the changes that he's made here today, such that variance number one, um, the north side yard setback, has now increased to point six. I think he said six seven or six two. Six zero. Six zero. Sorry. Yes. Point six zero uh, meters. And variance number three has um, increased to thirty two point four three percent for the rear yard landscaping. Elimination of variance number four and number five, and it'll be subject to forestry. That's my motion. Thank you very much, Ms. Sankar. Can I get someone to second that motion? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? Uh, Mr. Chair, there was a, a, an additional condition regarding uh, uh, permeable. Uh, uh, oh, yes. I, I, I forgot. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Uh, Ms. Sankar, there I was. Accept that. I accept that amendment. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? And uh, Mr. Kidd's in favor. So, uh, sir, your application is uh, unanimously approved. Your revised application has been unanimously approved, subject to urban forestry conditions and the city planning condition that you use permeable materials when constructing the proposed driveway. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Item number 33, 25 Old Eglinton Avenue. I have one person registered to speak on this item. That is... Sadegi, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I just wanted to ask that uh, you've probably seen those reports, the one from city planning dated the 16th of October, and the one from, and the one from transportation services dated the 14th of October. Both of those divisions have an objection to your proposal. Yes. Sir, can you mute your uh, device while you're not speaking? Thank you. Uh, can I, uh, I know there's no one else registered to speak on this item. You have one variance before us. As I indicated, no objections from transportation services or city planning. So I'll uh, just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or would like a presentation. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan. Thank you, sir. Sir, I would like to move this uh, application to be approved on the condition of uh, recommendations made by the staff that this driveway widening by removing the grass island to join the two driveways for the maneuvering of a larger vehicles that uses this site. The proposed driveway width of 71.78 meters whereas the bylaw permits 11 meter. Considering the history and use of this lot, the staff makes the recommendation and that there is no objection from the staff that this variance be accepted and the variance is moved for approval. Forestry condition applies. Thank you very much, Mr. Khan. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Kidd seconds, all those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Item number 34, 103 Esgar Drive, Esgar Avenue. I have two people registered to speak. Uh, one is the agent, Mr. Rubinoff. Are you there, sir? Uh, yes, I am. Good morning. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, just wanted to ask if you've had the opportunity to, there's a city planning report of the 13th of October. Uh, they appear to have, uh, that they have no objection to your application, provided that if we approve it, that the property be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing submitted to the committee of adjustment and attached as attachment one to their report. And there's also a uh, transportation services report dated the 14th of October 
indicating just if we approve the application that you put a, a notation on the site plan drawing stating that all portions of the existing access driveways that are no longer required uh, must be closed and restored with soft landscaping at the typical standard condition. Uh, have you had the opportunity to review those reports, sir? Uh, yes, yes, we have, and uh, they are, we are in agreement with them as well. Yep. Okay, thank you, sir. We have one other person registered to speak on this application. So if you could give us a uh, brief presentation yep. on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is an application for a second story addition over an existing garage and over an existing one story addition at the back. Um, and the uh, staff report talks a little bit about the uh, about this uh, in their comments and their report that it's an existing setback issue uh, and that uh, because it's only for a portion of the side yard that they feel that it's appropriate development for the site. It's an irregular lot and it's just for a portion of that. So this is regarding the side yard setback uh, variance. Um, with regards to the application itself, my client has been uh, in touch with uh, with the neighbors uh, next door at uh, uh, at uh, 105 Escor, and has uh, felt uh, has made efforts. Uh, Ida Evangelista was uh, retained as her representative to speak with the neighbor and her representative, and there was a, a lot of effort put in to try to reach an agreement and an understanding. Uh, however, we didn't at the end uh, achieve that. Uh, we do, however, there was some concern about privacy. Um, there was a there's a two windows uh, adjacent to the neighboring property. One is if you look on the second floor plan, one is facing uh, one is for the bedroom facing the back, and one is for the den adjacent to that. And then the den window is facing the side there directly, and that. Uh, we've offered to the neighbor to frost that window for privacy purposes. Um, however, the bedroom itself is a, uh, you know, is the only, it's a bedroom window. Um, they've asked that it not be an operable window and they've asked that it be frosted as well. And we don't agree with that simply because as a bedroom, you like to open your window for fresh air and such. It is facing the back, as you can see on the, um, on the, uh, on the second floor plan. The, um, so, you know, we've made efforts to speak with the neighbors and try to come to an agreement. Ida's had several uh, discussions with her representative. And uh, here we are today. Uh, I feel this is a minor application uh, before you. Um, it's a top up over existing portions of a house. And, um, and uh, my client's just looking to uh, enjoy the additional space for their house. So, I feel that the variances before you are minor in nature. Um, I do want to point out that variance number two uh, has been eliminated. Okay, uh, the proposed. You. Okay, Mr. Yeah. Rubinoff, just let me stop you there for a second. So, uh, you're proposing to delete variance number two. That's the variance that the proposed rear deck project 5.49 meters from the rear wall. That variance you're deleting. Yes, that variance is being deleted because the height is not higher than the 1.2 permitted. We've adjusted the deck to be lower, so it no longer is a variance. Okay, so variance, okay. Two, is, variance two is deleted and the remaining four variances stay the same? Yes, they do. Okay, yes, thank do. you. Thank you. Any and further? just, just um, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I was just gonna say one other comment was there are, uh, there are other homes in the area that have additions or new builds that have side yard setbacks at or uh, even below the setback of this side yard uh, uh, setback variance for the existing garage. So I really feel that what we're proposing is nothing unusual for the area. And if, if I'm correct, Thanks. sir, you're, refer you're referring to variance number three specifically, the north side yard setback. That's the one that uh, is, it's, it's an exist really an existing condition. Is that correct? Yes, we're building on top of an existing garage. That's the existing garage setback. Okay. At the corner. You. Thank yeah. you. Any questions of the speaker? Mr. Kidd? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and just so I'm clear, are you changing the footprint of the building at all, or is this just uh, a second story additions on top of existing uh, one story portions? Exactly. It's a second story addition above existing one story portions. Okay. Thank so you. the footprint's not changing at all? No, no change to the footprint. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. I have one uh, person registered to speak that's Colleen French. Uh, madam, are you there? Ms. French, are you there? I am. Oh, thank you, Ms. French. Can I get your full name and address, please? My name is Colleen French, 105 Escort Drive, Toronto, Ontario, M5M 3S1. Okay, thank you, madam. If you could give us your uh, your thoughts on this application, please. I am the owner of 105, and this property is immediately to the north of 103. My house is oriented so that the alcove, which faces south and contains my kitchen window and outdoor patio, directly faces the central part of the proposed renovation expansion. I have serious concerns. Any new second floor windows, will I will lose my privacy, my personal enjoyment of my outdoor patio and the associated kitchen window. The encroachment of the second story addition atop the garage, variance three, and it's not a minor variance, would eliminate most, if not all, of all the late morning and afternoon sun on both my patio and kitchen as well as any skyscape view in the other parts of the day. I ask the committee to refuse this application as these issues preclude it from meeting any or all of the four tests for minor variances. Should the committee decide to approve this application, I request the following conditions as provided by my consultants, Joseph Urban Consultants, be included in any such approval that the Rubinoff Design Group submitted site plan shall be attached to this decision per city planning staff recommendation, and any second story windows on the building north wall or alcove abutting 105 shall be frosted from the bottom for 75% of the window height and the full width. And any second story addition above the existing garage shall be limited to a length and location not to exceed 60%, 12 feet of the overall garage length depth, 20 feet from the front main wall. As Mr. Rubinoff said, his client wants to enjoy a new house. Well, I would love to continue to enjoy my patio and my privacy. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rubinoff, you had the opportunity to hear Ms. French's comments. If you'd like to reply to those, please. Uh, yes, uh, I just wanted to state that uh, on top of the garage right now is an existing rooftop terrace. So in terms of privacy, building a second story with no windows, like on the on the exterior, on the on the side of the garage, it's providing more privacy for for the neighbor, not less. In fact, you know, there a terrace up there right now would provide, uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're not, they're neighbors, they want to get along, they want to have privacy anyways, but uh, asking, we're just simply saying we want to build on top of the existing uh, garage and have a window for the bedroom and a window for the uh, den. Uh, the den, we've agreed that, you know, that, that frosting, because it's directly facing them, would be acceptable, but the bedroom itself is, is a Someone living in the bedroom needs to be able to enjoy the outside much like anyone else, but I don't believe it's, this is an issue of, uh, of privacy. Um, and I believe that the, uh, uh, that the addition being on top of the four walls of the garage is appropriate. Okay, thank you very much, Rubinoff. Any questions of the speaker? Thank you. Could I get a motion on this revised application? Please, please note committee that the variance number two, which relates to the, uh, Proposed rear deck projection that has been deleted. So there are only four variances before us now at this stage. If I could get a motion on the application, please. On the revised application, I'm sorry. Ms. Sankar. 
Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, um, having listened to um, both parties, I, you know, I, I, I tend to understand and agree with um, what Mr. Rubinoff uh, has said and the attempts that he's made to uh, rectify state um, issues and, and try to moderate a solution between neighbors. Um, so I do believe in looking at this and especially with the elimination of variance number two, uh, I, I feel that it does meet the four tests as is. So what I will do is I'll motion to approve uh, the application. It will be subject to the changes made by Mr. Rubinoff today, such that variance number two be eliminated. Um, that the property will also be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing submitted to the Committee of Adjustment. That is based on the October 13th uh, staff report. And um, I think uh, in terms of uh, there's also, transport services. Yes, there's also that condition sorry? from them, Ms. Sankar. Sorry, I was getting to that. So, in terms of uh, transport, that is the October 14th transport report um, to add a notation on the site plan drawing stating that all portions of existing access driveways that are no longer required must be closed and restored with the lands soft landscaping and or full concrete curbs to the satisfaction of transport services. That's my motion. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion. Mr. Kidd seconds, all those in favor? And motion carries unanimously. Mr. Rubinoff, your application has been uh, unanimously approved subject to city planning and transportation services conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 35, 68 Langholm Drive. I have one person registered to speak. That is the agent uh, Rajinder Chaku. Are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and the committee members. Can I get your full uh, name and address, please, sir? My full name is Rajinder Chaku. Uh, my address is 8 Annual Circle, Brampton, L6X2M2. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I just uh, note that we only have one staff comment here, and that's from the Toronto Region Conservation Authority. They have no objection to your proposal. Uh, again, there's no one else registered to speak on this item. You have three variances before us. It's very clear what you're asking for. Uh, I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or would like a presentation. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, there are no forestry requirements and no objection. So I would make, I understand that these are minor variances, variances one, two, three. They meet the intent of the zoning bylaw 569-2013, and I move this should be approved. Thank you very much, Mr. Khan. Someone to second that? Mr. Kidd seconds, all those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved uh, without condition. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, thank you. Item number 36, 453 Ruth Avenue. I have one person registered to speak, a Jonathan Benskowski. Are you there, sir? I'm here. Yes, thank you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, Jonathan Benskowski, 301 Kiwatton Avenue. And thank you for adding me to the list, Adam. There's a little bit of confusion on my part. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to ask if you've had the opportunity to see the transportation services report of the October the 15th. They have no objections to your application, provided that you put a notation on the plan indicating that uh, that you're closing up the existing site access that are no longer required and restoring it with soft landscaping and full concrete curbs. Have you read that report? Correct. Okay, Sorry. thank you, sir. Uh, it's pretty clear what you're asking for, sir. We have no one registered to speak on this item other than yourself. I think the committee is pretty clear on what you're asking for. I'll just ask them if they have any questions or if they would like a presentation. Sure, uh, Mr. Chair, all I would ask is we did submit a revised site plan based upon some late forestry comments that came in. It is uploaded on the AIC dated yesterday. So if you were to approve this, I would ask that you would would uh, approve it based upon the revised site plan that came in yesterday. It doesn't change any variances. All it did is relocate the rear pool as well as move the front entrance driveway slightly 
to accommodate some trees that forestry wished to be saved. Okay, so can you, I don't know the end. can you summarize what it is you want us to do? All, uh, so as of yesterday, we did submit a revised site plan. That revised site plan doesn't change any variance or anything. All it does essentially is relocate a couple of things to save trees. I think regardless of even if we were to make it a condition today, we would go forward with that at forestry because that is what forestry is recommending and it really doesn't affect us. But we did tell them that we would ask that. So I would feel more comfortable telling you that we did speak to forestry and we did revise it to alleviate yeah, okay. a couple of the concerns they had. Sir, we have, just to, to clarify, we have a recommendation from urban forestry for conditions on this application. So those would be applied anyway. But I'll just, Perfect, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll just ask, uh, Mr. Antonacci, are, are there any issues with respect to his mention of his revised drawings? No, there isn't. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Antonacci. Again, uh, we have only the condition from transportation services and urban forestry. No one else registered to speak on this item. Uh, if, uh, would the committee like to make a motion? Mr. Kahn? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Transportation has okayed the variance number two and four, and forestry conditions uh, are going to be applied, and he has to take up this issue with the uh, forestry. So I will make a variation, uh, uh, yeah, one and three, five are minor in nature, and then meet the zoning bylaw, so, and it's intent. So therefore I would move, it should be approved with conditions. Okay, so just to summarize, Mr. Khan, you're moving approval of the application subject to transportation services and urban forestry conditions? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. And someone to second that motion? Thank our seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved subject to transportation service, services and urban forestry report, urban forestry conditions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item number 37, 5 Buxton Road. I have one person registered to speak. That's a Joe Domb, D-O-M-B. Are you there, sir? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, thank you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, uh, my name is Joe Dome, 1101 Steeles Avenue West, agent for the applicant. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to uh, indicate to you we have two reports here from Transportation Services and TRCA. Neither of those agencies have any objection to your proposal. Uh, City Planning has indicated they appear to have no objections, provided that uh, if the committee approves the application, the property be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing submitted to the committee attached as attachment number one to their report. Have you had the chance to... Re uh, re to Read those uh, reports? Yes, I have. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you're aware of them. It's pretty clear what you're mm -hmm. asking for, sir, in your five variants. I think the committee's pretty clear on that. I'll just ask them if they have any questions or would like a presentation. Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to ask only for my information one thing. Sir, when you are making to make revisions to the active build of addition, what do you mean? Uh, so sorry, could you repeat that? Sure. You are asking to make revisions to the active build of addition on the north and on the north and west portion of the existing building. What do you mean by revision to the active build of addition? Uh, so there was a, a permit that was issued for um, uh, got approved the committee of adjustment last year. And so this is, um, uh, they'd like to alter that. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any further questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I feel the uh, proposed variance is minor in nature and uh, I'd like to put forward a more motion to accept the application subject to um, the condition that the property be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawings submitted to the committee of adjustment 
and attached uh, to the uh, planning staff report dated October 13th, uh, 2020, and also subject to forestry conditions. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Can I get someone to uh, second that motion, Mr. Hunt? All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved subject to city planning and urban forestry conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are now on item number 38, which is 94 Regina Avenue. Is the uh, I have one person registered to speak on that. That's Harry Seth Sachs. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, just indicated that there are, uh, we have no staff comments or recommended conditions on your application. There is no one, uh, no one here other than yourself registered to speak on the item. I'm just going to pretty clear what you're asking for in the three variances. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or it would like a presentation. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, seeing that there's no objections, nothing from staff or councillors, and seem seemingly folks are in agreement, I'll put forward a motion to approve uh, this application. Um, and it is, that's it, no forestry. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. All those, uh, someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting. Sir, your application has been approved without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Item number 39. I have, that is 323 Empress Avenue. I have two people registered to speak. One is the agent, Moran Hadari. Are you there? Hello, yes. Hello. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Mr. Hadari? I'm here. I'm can here. I get, can I get your full name and address, please? Uh, Mehran Hayari, 1090 Don Mills Road, Unit 506. Okay, sir. I just wanted to ask if you had the opportunity to read the city planning report of the 23rd of March. They indicated that they have no objection, provided that the proposal is developed substantially in accordance with the east and west side elevation drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment attached as attachments one and two to this report. Have you had the opportunity to read that report, sir? Yes, and I don't have any problem. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, in view of the fact that we have uh, one other person here who has uh, expressed interest on this item, actually two other people, I'm sorry. If you could uh, give us a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal, please. Yes, this application is deferred because of the neighbor's uh, opposition uh, on the 321 and 325 Empress uh, Avenue. Unfortunately, my client tried several times to approach them, but the meeting couldn't happen. I met the owner of 325 Empress and explained the application and they, uh, the day before the first hearing date. Also, I was the, at the door of the owner 321 Empress uh, and alone uh, I passed my contact to his son, but again, I couldn't meet him. Uh, I was there with uh, just my client and no one else was with us. Uh, and uh, about the request variances that we have, variance number one setback on the uh, property. So if you see, we improve the front yard setbacks from uh, 6.14 meter to 7.53 uh, meter. And also on the east side setback, we are improving from 1.18 meter to 1.52 meter only for 8.99 meter of the front part of the wall. And the existing length of the, this side wall is 8.58 meter and it's less but it's also very minor changes of the existing. Also, we have 1.5 meter side setback for the just 5.33 meter of this length of the wall that I believe this is so minor and common in this world 
For example, number 320Y impressed that is opposition of this application has 1.2 meter at the best site setback for the same length of the wall. And it's common in the, all the application that is submitted to the, the committee of adjustment. About the soil by height uh, variance, as uh, the staff uh, recommend the site, tying the application, so the site uh, elevation, this is uh, just for minor area of the site wall and it's not for whole, uh, for, uh, whole wall length. And uh, we are not uh, going more than 10 meter of the total height of the building based on the uh, new zoning by that. Number four, this variance is just for uh, Every application, the same size lot at this, this part is applying for 32% and it's common and it's approved. And number 321, Empress, that is opposition of this application, again, is 32% uh, lot coverage that is got the permit one time ago. And for number five, it's just for six steps wider steps, it's uh, 0 0.25 meters. And so number six, we have the old boiler height that is mid of the roof that uh, is not affecting the whole building height that uh, may affect the neighbor's uh, uh, privacy or uh, shadow. If there is any question, I'm happy to answer. Okay, thank you, sir. I wanted to ask, um, back on the 23rd of June, we adjourned this application uh, in order that you could meet with area residents to discuss their concerns. Have you done that? Actually, yes, my clients uh, uh, tried to meet the neighbors and got uh, lots of the uh, supporting letter that is uh, on the application, but the opposite, uh, the opposite uh, neighbors immediately they couldn't uh, um, uh, get the appointment. My client couldn't get the appointment from them because uh, he, they refused to meet and uh, the, and also I couldn't have any opportunity to find any contact from them. And also I'm living the same neighborhood. My house is 10 house north of these houses and I already passed every day to find the opportunity to meet them without knocking the door because last time they was mad of me that I went there with the 10 people at the front, but it wasn't true. I was there alone and this is why, and I couldn't get any contact from the city as well because we don't have any email from them. So there was uh, almost black to meet them. Okay, uh, so, so can you summarize, did you meet with the area residents? Yes or no? So, uh, my clients met, yes, met them, met most of the neighbors and talked to them, but uh, the opposition parties didn't accept me. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, we have any questions of the speaker? I have the next speaker is a Dong Mi Wang. Are you there? Dong Mei Wang, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, hi. Um, uh, my name, can you give us your full yeah, name and address, to, please? Yeah, my name is uh, Si Chi Wang, and I'm living in uh, Unit 1508 5162 Yang Street. Um, I just attend this meeting on behalf of Dong Mei Wang because she cannot attend, but she won't. Okay, are you sure you're speaking on her behalf? You have author authorization? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, proceed. Yes. So, um, Adome Wang and her family has resided in two, three, uh, 322 B Empress since they immigrated to Canada. And, uh, okay, I would use just um, her voice, okay. I deeply understand that Zen and his wife eager to integrate into our society. Some neighbor may fear this couple are only here to build a new house and then flip it and go away. But I have no such fear because I know Zen and his family want to set his home here and be a member of our community. During the pandemic, 
He's with the Chinese Association to raise money to purchase the personal protection equipment and donate it to the Sunnybrook Hospital. He's such a gorgeous person that our community needs. The committee can find out on the plan survey. Zheng's proposal is moving away from Mr. Uh, Mrs. Kim almost 40 centimeters and given them their house is located on the south side of the street. The sunlight and the sky enjoyed by the 325 Empress uh, will not be affected by the proposed change. The increase in the shadow to Mr. Azin is mainly due to the change in height by 0 0.15 meter and the west side side setback by 0 0.28 meter. The shadow is only a small portion and only cast to his rear door and bathroom window. In terms of the fire hazard, we believe that that should not be the reason for objection due to first, fire is a human behavior and can be controlled before it goes severe and it's every owner's interest to not have fire. Secondly, the proposed changes give Mr. Azim more safety margin to the fire hazard compared to his east side neighbor. Our neighborhood is involving in the type of residential homes. More houses got approved from the committee to suit their needs to accommodate bigger family. Houses like Zheng proposed are being seen on every street of Villadale that I don't even need to bring up the specific example here. Therefore, I believe the proposed changes are minor, are desirable for the use of the land, respect the general intent of zoning code, and satisfy the purpose of the official plan. Me and my family strongly wish that chair and a member of committee to approve the minor variance. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, any questions of the speaker? There being none, our next speaker is Anash Azin. Are you there? Uh, Mr. Azin, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Can I get your full name Hello? and address, please? Yes, I'm here. Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? Uh, 321 Empress Arash Azin. I need your name, sir. Yes, it's Arash Azin, 321 Empress. Okay. Ash Azin. Thank you. If you can you proceed, you can give us your views on this application. Yeah, I mean, my concerns are very, very simple. My only concern is that uh, the west side setback towards my property and the west side height elevation amendment uh, is set. I mean, in terms of the height elevation, there's going to be clearly uh, a, a privacy concern with respect to uh, direct view into the uh, upside uh, upstairs uh, bedrooms, which are occupied by children, as well as a complete um, obstruction of sunlight into the west side of the house, which two children live in. And in terms of the uh, west side side back, uh, Empress Avenue is, a, is a quite a busy street, as you may or may not know. And uh, that making it a narrow hallway on the west side, which is used uh, to access the backyard for the children, raises a safety concern for the children to be able to go out without being able to see what's going on in the street. Uh, so these are my concerns. And uh, uh, obviously, since the last time we had convened here, there's been no, uh, no uh, attempt to uh, amend those concerns that I had already previously voiced. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? Uh, that was our last registered speaker. I'll go back to the agent. Sir, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Sir, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear now, you. Now, uh, have, you've heard the comments from the previous speaker. The, uh, the one from Ms. Wang was in favor of your application. Uh, do you need to comment on the, uh, on the comments from Mr. Azin? Mr. Uh, excuse me. Yes, sir. Uh, there are two as the speaker. Haven't speak. Pardon me, sir. Sir, are you there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, can you hear us? Yes, I can, but someone told that there is two other uh, speakers. 
Did you did you hear the previous speaker, Mr. Azin? He, he was from. Uh, yes, I did. Okay, so did you want to respond to his to his uh, concerns? It was regarding the site yes. setback. Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, I met uh, the owner of the three twenty five Empress Avenue. I explained the application and I passed my business card to them, and they didn't call me for any other uh, comments or requests. And about the Mr. Azin, uh, again, I uh, had I passed my information to his son, but unfortunately, they couldn't call me to explain. And the overall height of the building is 10 meters. And there is no difference if we have uh, less side wall height at the window location or any part of the walls that is uh, facing to their property. The height is same height we are if regardless of the variance that we have the total height of the building is the same and about the setback that he mentioned about the privacy and the passing the children you know the my clients or every uh, every owner has right to uh, erect the fence on the property line it means the passing channel between the two houses is limited to the each property and again at the 321 Empress, Mr. Azin house, if he can take the measurement from his west side is 1.2 meter. Actually, we are 1.52 meter. We are in the better planning of the design on the property than them. And the length of the sidewall height, it's just for a small portion. It's just for 5.33 meter of the length of the wall. And the rest is matching with the bylaw. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? Can I get a motion on this application? Mr. Chair, please? we actually have one more speaker. We have that another speaker? Yeah, it looks like there was a late registering. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, sir, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to, uh, do we have a late register? We have another speaker who would like to comment on your application. Can the I get his speaker's name is Andrew Chan, and I'll unmute him now. Okay, sir, are you there? Hi. Yes, yes, I, I am. Can, can I you get hear me your, all right? Can I get your name and address, please? Yeah, my name is Andrew Chan. I'm representing 326. Okay. From what and uh, I did register on time. I just, sorry to interrupt. Okay, please proceed. So I just want to speak um, in general support of the application. We've been in the neighborhood for 32 years. My parents have owned the property for 32 years. We've never actively obstructed any developments. We've reviewed the proposals. We think it's quite safe, even though there is, it's gonna be a little bit taller. It may block out our kitchen sunlight a little bit. We can't oppose something where, you know, Michael's trying to move his family in here and start a new life. We don't think as neighbors, it's our place to govern um, what somebody does with their property. Obviously it's within, it's a minor variance of the bylaw. He's moving back away from the neighboring houses. Uh, he's been very professional throughout the process, and we just wanted to speak on his behalf and just, you know, just a good character reference here, and we'd love to have him in the neighborhood and his young family. That's all I have to say. Thank you for taking the time to address my concerns. Okay, thank you. So if I could summarize, you're generally in favor of the application? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Uh, Again, uh, we don't have to go back to the agent because the this last speaker was in favor of the proposal. Could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Yes, I thank all the speakers who came out today, especially those who have been in support. It's really nice to see. Um, just looking at this, regardless of hearing uh, the speakers, I, I do believe based on what the applicant has explained and the application itself, I feel it meets the four tests. For that reason, I'll put forward a motion to approve this application. And um, I don't think there was anything else that it no. needed to be subject. Oh, what's the city planning condition? Um, Build in accordance to the plans. Right. Okay. So uh, oh. if you let me know the date of that one, because uh, I'm just, I'm seeing a number of staff report files here. So I'll, I'll just make it subject to uh, the most recent staff report uh, in 23rd of March. Right. The 23rd of March staff report. Thank you. Uh, someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion. Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? 
That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved subject to city planning conditions. Item number 40, 72 Vanderhoof Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That is a Babak Naghash. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am. Good afternoon. My name is Babak Naghash. Can I get your ad the address? Owner. Uh, 72 under half avenue okay thank you i uh, just wanted to let you know sir we have uh other than urban forestry we have no staff comments or recommended conditions you have three variances that you're requesting it's very clear what you're asking for i think the uh, i'll just ask the committee if it would like further clarification or it has any questions or would like a presentation there being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan? Thank you, sir. Uh, although there are no staff recommendations, I find variants one, two, three are minor in nature and they satisfy the bylaw, zoning bylaw, and therefore I move this uh, to be approved with the forestry conditions. Yes. Yeah, with forestry conditions. Subject to urban forestry, correct? Right. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Someone to second Thank that you, motion? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved. Subject to urban forestry conditions. And that is the end of our agenda. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, committee. Can I get a motion to terminate? I motion to terminate, oh, perfect. sir. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. And we are done for the day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, Thank everyone. Everybody. Bye. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>